What is up everyone? My name's Damien. Welcome back to another video. It's been a while, hasn't it? I've been sick. Again. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> um, day I'm recording this is Daffodil Day, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> right, if you haven't noticed, this isn't scripted at all. Um... You've probably seen by the title, this is going to be me talking about my experiences with gender dysphoria in terms of eating disorders. So, if, if talk about gender dysphoria or eating disorders, especially starvation or limited food disorders, like type eating disorders, then don't watch this video. This is the little trigger warning here, because, you know, it's just not good. And I've been struggling a bit recently, but, you know, it's just good not to watch stuff that could possibly trigger you. So this is going to be great fun editing this video, but let's start. <clears throat> so the first thing I really remember when it comes to actually thinking about how much like, weight I'm gaining in terms of, like, how that will affect my body was, I remember it quite clearly, because we were on a trip to my granddad's, bleh, we were on a trip to my grandparents' house in England, right? We were going out somewhere for a day, and my brother and my dad had to get changed in another room, right? I was about 11 at the time, so puberty, just starting, depression, just starting, it's gray. But as I was getting changed, like, you know how in a bunch of old people's houses, they have a bunch of, like, their wardrobes kind of all have mirrors on them? So I was looking at the mirrors, and all I see is, like, my mother and my sister, like, getting dressed. And if you know me in real life, you know, um, if you know me in real life, you know that my mother and my sister are, um, you know, they're bigger then I uh, would be seen as the norm, you know, that's not inherently a bad thing, right? But as a result, or possibly genetics as well, they had bigger, uh, badonkadonks, if you get what I mean. Right, so I'm looking over there at them with, like, fucking honkers. And at that point, I'm like, your body, when you start puberty, your body just changes a little bit and you notice it and it's like, what's going on here? You know? So I look over, I don't even look over, I, I'm looking at the mirror and I see them, of course, in the mirror, it's a mirror. And I just see these and my mind immediately equates, you know, being bigger with a bigger honker do longus and um and the bum bum <laughs> so that's where shit really started to get not too well beware that was more of in the summer i didn't really learn about puberty until the end of the summer especially like i remember i was trying to play minecraft with my brother on like xbox 360 <laughs> that's how old this is and then my mother takes me out, tells me about puberty, and I cried my eyes out. <laughs> I am not kidding. Um, <clears throat> right. So, I feel like things started to get worse, because in primary school, I was in an all-girls primary school. It didn't help that there was an all-boys primary school right next to the all-girls primary school. But, you know, it's just a tad bit awkward. And, you know, it's just a tad bit awkward in general. Like, because I thought, ah, oh, I don't need those fucking, you know, do longest holders. <laughs> like, I can go fine. And then one day I was playing PE, you know, like, I think it was basketball. And I went home just, like, not with my jumper on, with, like, the polo shirt on. My mother came to talk to me. Because, it, it, like, it was noticeable. And, yeah, um, be aware. 
Like, if you've never been to an all-girls school, especially a primary school, most people are small in terms of height. I was, like, the second tallest kid in the school when it came to 5th and 6th class. So, and of course, puberty, so I'm just, like, growing in height. So I just already feel, like, a bit out of it. But then, like, I've had many people call me fat before. And it's not fun. <laughs> Especially when you're already insecure about the one thing that makes you believe people think you're fat. And it's not. It's like, I can't control it. I'm sorry. Do you want to give me tea? Please do. <laughs> um. So yeah, it was mainly in 5th and 6th class where it started to be... Like, I started this weird thing where, like, I'd eat a bunch of, like, crisps, a bunch of junk food, right? But I would feel awful after doing it and before doing it, right? Like, I'd have many times where I'd just skip lunch, and I'd just feel bad and I'd already stuff crisps in my mouth afterwards, right? So that wasn't exactly a fun experience, but, you know, they talked about eating disorders, uh, mm. Not too much. And usually, like, whenever people do talk about eating disorders, it's like, oh, because they don't like their body, when in reality, their body's perfect. Especially young girls, their bodies are developing. It's all gonna be fine. So I was like, okay, I'll grow out of it. And how bad I feel about my body. Like, it was starting in fifth... Starting in 4th, 5th, and 6th class, like, I started to, like, hunch over all the time to hopefully let my shirt and jumper just, like, cover. And now I just have a disposition to just hunch over now, so that's great for my back and my family history of arthritis. But then, the kicker, mixed gender school, I don't know, you know what I mean, boys and girls school for secondary school. You know, had some people call me fat then. Hasn't really changed now, even though... <clears throat> but, yeah. I had quite a few people call me fat, especially in first year. Had a bunch of people who are now still in my year. There's a bunch of messers, right? And they'd always, like, poke fun at me, right? And of course... I'm really insecure about my body at this point, and it's like, I don't want to be notice, right? And then started the worst part, and was that I started looking up to all the guys in my class. And for the exception of like one guy, and he know who he is, they're all fucking skinny as fuck. No offense, dude, right? They're literally twigs and like six foot. And it's fucking annoying. So first year me is like, wow, I really wish I had that deep voice. Wow, I really wish I had that jawline. Wow, I really wish I had a flat chest. Ah! Right. First year realized I was trans. What up? <laughs> but not to mention all those guys that I'd look to and be like, oh, I want this, want that, want that and that right? They were all extremely skinny. And that's when my just health in general started getting a, a bit bad. No, I ended up getting an abusive friend, which really did not help with any of my insecurities. And just things went to shit. <laughs> Self-harming, like, started to become more common at that, that time. So, <laughs> yeah. It wasn't really until second year when things got worse. So it was after October of second year, right? That's when things like, like I really wanted my mother to get me a binder. She did not comply by then. And basically, you know, I start looking just like, huh, let's look at how some other trans guys are doing it, right? Try to make my own binder that failed and she figured it out. But then I see a bunch of these super skinny trans guys and super skinny cis guys. 
and I think, wow, maybe becoming a skeleton is a good idea. It's not. So, I remember in second year around February, I tried to go at least a few days only eating polos. <clears throat> which sounds really fucking stupid. It was. And I was able to survive like one day. <laughs> But things didn't really get too bad until the summer of second year, because I had a huge mental breakdown, <laughs> and due to just because of all my anxiety, dysphoria, and a bunch of shit, I could not eat without feeling like I was immediately going to throw it all back up. Which is just great. So basically, that lasted about a month, a month and a half, about. Of me just like, I lost a shit ton of weight. Be aware, be aware, I wasn't really fat at all. I was about 130 pounds, which is like average weight for someone my height, you know? But I went down to like, I think my lowest weight was like 118. But still, when it's like this, you could literally see so much of like, bones and all that. So much more than you just genuinely do with me. So, you know, I was recovering from that. And then shit hit the fan in November of that year. Where basically, I started trying to throw up my dinner every day after I have shower. As in, I'd set the shower really hot, burn my stomach with it, and then see if I could throw up. Didn't work until like the beginning of December, end of November. I tried that, but then I got really hungry, so I ate, like, a meal. And then I ate another meal. Like, it was, like, rice and chicken masala. I fucking love that, by the way. <clears throat> Basically, I still felt hungry, but I didn't eat anything else. Next morning, school day, right after a long weekend, I feel like shit. I get into the car after getting dressed and all that. I have some bread. Have some toast, specifically. And, you know, I'm just trying to, like, I take a bite of it, car starts moving, gets really warm in the car because it's December and cold as fuck. <laughs> and then what happens? I start throwing up all over myself to the point we have to pull over on, like, it's not a motorway. It's kind of like a highway. There's only, like, one motorway in Ireland, so you get what I mean, though. I have to throw up out the door, like... They had, like, my mother had to make a detour, drop me at my granddad's, then drop my brother to school and bring my sister to Tishkin's. And it's just like, but that caused a very, very bad chain for a good few months where basically I try to just eat three meals, as in breakfast, dinner, and a tiny s snack. It didn't do too well. I really wanted to reach 110 pounds. Luckily, I didn't. And I just remember thinking that if I lose weight, Honka de Dorgos will get smaller and my waist will get smaller. That's not how that works. Like, I'm lucky enough to where I got my family's jeans that have a pretty small bedonkers, right? Because it was either fucking B cup or like double D cup or larger. So I actually got pretty lucky. Um, so yeah. And by the way, like, and by the end of March, I say of last year, I started to try break out of it. Of course, I've fallen back down of just eating three meals a day. <clears throat> Well, you know, I've been working on it, you know, and now, like, this is the first time I've really started to feel like I'm about to relapse after a while, like, after, for a few months, so that is pretty good. I'm still sick, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but to any trans guys out there that are thinking of maybe, uh, starving themselves or limiting their food because they think it will make it easier to pass... While you may get a jawline, like, things like hips 
and other, you know, more female associated bone structure actually po poke out even more because of the lack of skin or fat, like obstructing it. So like your hips actually can pop out more than they would, you know? And I'm pretty sure like if you're binding and you're incredibly skinny, it's more of a chance that you may get binding injuries. Like, especially on your ribs, because, you know, they're going to be more exposed, the skinnier, like, the more dangerously skinnier you are. And that can affect possible top surgery results in the future, including not being able to safely have top surgery. So, like, looking back at it, you know, it's not a good thing at all. It does not help you. Maybe it'll help you a tiny bit, but there's tons of different ways that can help you pass. That doesn't involve starving yourself. Not only can it cause you, you know, a shorter life expectancy, but even now, I don't know if there's an actual different problem or not, but even when I eat a meal now, like, I still feel like I've eaten way too much and I'm about to throw up. You know, that may be a different issue, but, you know, medical system sucks here, so... <laughs> Whether or not it is, we don't fucking know. <laughs> but anyway, it's never a good idea. I will be linking some, like, numbers and places to text if you are struggling with any sort of eating disorder down in the description, be it bulimia, anorexia, binge eating disorder, even the one where you have type 1 diabetes and you don't take your insulin which is a type of eating disorder, you can do more research about it because it is actually extremely dangerous as, you, as it just sounds. So those will be in the description if you need it. Always reach out to someone if you are feeling this way because even if people in your, immediately, in your immediate area won't listen, there are people that do listen and do want the best for you. I've been Damien and I'm out. Peace.